Williams, it's Tracy from Tea Time with Tracy and Crew. Um, Violet and Boris are here. There's Freddy, Jerry, my skeleton's over there, and Francis, my giant grapefruit plant, is out there. But it is like 6.30 in the morning. I have two kids homesick today, so they will not be going to school, and I just, I have a mountain of books to get through. Here's a little clip. Yeah, those are the books that I read last year, and I want to start organizing my bookshelves, but I want to talk about some of the books that I've read before I do. Um, so today, I'm, I just have three, it looks like three, more than three books, but there's one book. This is a trilogy, and this is a trilogy. There's zombie apocalypse books, and I just want to talk about these ones today. Kind of zombie apocalypse, like, I just, apocalyptic kind of books so the first one i'm going to talk about is paul tremblay he's a very popular author i've read a couple other books of his i wanted to read this one because i'm a fan of zombies and um this one is about two women naomi i think i had to read like i read these books last year i read 94 books last year uh dr Rom romola and there's another lady i forget what her name is um the other lady is pregnant, and this is in a world that's ravished with an infection. It's not necessarily zombies, but it turns people into zombie-like creatures that attack people and things like that. The whole world, at least the United States, has been ravished. Uh, it's falling apart. There's little encampments. Um, but Ram Dr. Romola uh, is friends with this other lady who was pregnant, and she was actually bitten by somebody like the other person was bitten by somebody with this infection and there's only so much amount of time before the infection takes over so this story um starts off uh with dr romola going to work and i think that's how you say her name the doctor lady going to work in a car it sounds normal and stuff like that but the infection has already been going on for months now um, only there's safeguards and guards like at the hospital she works at and stuff like this. And then one of her friends, the other lady that's the main star, the other main person in this story comes to the hospital because uh, she has a little bite and she's pregnant and she's freaking out and all that sort of thing. The hospital that the doctor works at, I believe, gets compromised and they're on a mission to travel across the country or or across the state or I forget now but travel to another place that's rumored to be a safe place for pregnant mothers um and they want to get there before this infection takes place they're not sure if they'll be welcomed in because this lady had been bitten but along the way that's what this story is so um there's kind of barren places there's young rogue people that think that they're warriors there's grown people that are corrupt and want to do nasty things. And, um, yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking. I don't find this story totally gripping like I've read some other ones. Um, but it was enjoyable. It was a quick read. It's just a little paperback. And um, I would recommend it if you, you just want something easy. It's not scary. Like, none of these are scary to me anyways. But it's just, you follow these two ladies, a um, story of friendship and survival and, um, yeah, struggles and, yeah, Survivor Song. I would recommend it. It's not my favorite, but it's, it was an okay, okay read. Uh, the next, this is a trilogy. There's three books, but it's just like one bind up. The Last Man Standing by Keith Clay Taylor. It's a zombie apocalypse thriller. This book, um, I actually read the first book in it, the beginning part of the year, and then the like the other two books I read later on in the year. I found this was such a super read. It's a long one. It's like 700 plus pages, but it's such an easy read, like comfortable for the eyes and for the comprehension and stuff. It was very easy, but this follows. I'm trying not to get these two mixed up because I just kind of refresh my mind about it, but this is about... Um, 
a reporter that was, it starts off um, a reporter over in Bangkok because there was some sort of infection that just um, tore through Bangkok um, and people going crazy and uh, like zombie apocalypse kind of thing over in Bangkok. And that was kind of isolated. The governments of the world totally sectioned that part of the world off and the government put out a story that was not the truth. There was one person that this reporter went to interview who was the the spokesperson for this corrupt government cover-up. Um, and the person he was interviewing was struggling with the choices that he made. And he kind of took money from the government to say this story, to put it out there, so the rest of the world won't freak out and the government can still have control over everybody. But the person that he was... Um, interviewing the super struggling and uh regrets his choices because this is going to get out and it's just a matter of time and um the reporter leaves that interview as the outbreak is still going on um and actually part of it gets worse while he's there it's just a matter of 24 hours 48 hours that he's there i believe uh the reporter i forget what his name is he goes back to the states he's from the states and it picks up, I don't know, maybe six months from then, maybe a year, I forget. But um, he, uh, the, the virus or whatever that happened over in Bangkok still hasn't reached where he is. But um, the government's still trying to cover it up because it is spreading throughout the world. Only this reporter knows what that fall guy or, you know, spokesperson told him. Um, it's not going to end. It's going to continue spreading over the world. And eventually it does. And he's just a, I don't know, maybe 30 year old, I forget, uh, reporter. He has a girlfriend. They live together. And eventually it comes to their town. And it's a matter of survival. And f the first book is about this reporter, his girlfriend, trying to get across I think this happens in New York, trying to get over to New Jersey. It's someplace with the bridge. I'm sorry. I can't remember. It's been a while. Um, but the government, um, like the, the, the city's gone nuts, gone nuts. So it's like survival to try to get across this bridge to get out of the city. Um, the government, however, has plans, um, a backup plan. They're just planning on bombing the whole city. So, uh, they get the inside scoop about this because they join up with a ragtag uh, few people and um, one of them um, has the inside scoop. And that's why they're so de determined to get out of the city because it's going to be bombed. And they try to warn people along the way, but nobody's listening because they're just concerned about the immediate threat instead of trying to escape. They're looking for government people to take care of them because... Oh my God, the world's falling apart and, you know, the government will put us in a camp and it'll be okay. They'll keep us safe. No, the government people are just, you know, they'll take you in, but they plan on, you know what I mean? Um, so the first book ends off with them trying to get out. There's some deaths, there's some dramatic stuff, but the characters in this book, this whole trilogy are really relatable. There's, you know, like the... There's nothing complex about it, but the it's like an action movie. It really is. This read more like a movie than any of the other two the, like series or books I'm going to talk about. This was like a movie. Uh, running through my head, I could see everything. I could feel everything. I could smell everything. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's not super edgy. Like It wraps up the whole trilogy. I don't mean it like it's not edgy. It wraps up like a Hollywood movie. You know what I mean? It's dramatic, but it's it wraps up with a nice little bow. And um, I'm like, oh, well, that's nice. But, you know, it's a bumpy ride along the way. And it's, um, it's good. I would certainly recommend this if you're into zombie apocalypse survival thriller action. And there's action through this whole thing. Like, there's movement. There's fighting. There's, you know, emotion and stuff. I really, really like this one. Okay, well, the last one I'm going to talk about is that I don't know what this trilogy is called, but Craig DeLuis, The Infection, 
the killing floor and the final cut. Now, I got this series because I read his book, Suffer the Children. I think it's the same Craig DeLuey, I'm assuming, which loved, if you don't know that book, I think I have an old video on my channel about that. Suffer the Children, a horror one for sure. A great one to read at Christmas if you like to read horror during Christmas because it happens around Christmas time. Just putting that out there. This one is a zombie apocalypse one too. Um, let me get this straight. This one has, um, okay, I gotta think. I'm getting it twisted. Just a second. <laughs> okay, I promised. I did read it. I just had to, I was looking at the characters. I was trying not to get it mixed up with this one. This one is about a virus and it's kind of like zombies. I would say it's zombies. Um, this one is about an infection that takes over uh, the world. Um, it just happens in a matter of two or three days. All of a sudden, the world's gone to hell in a handbasket. And this, you get to really know the characters in this book. Uh, there's a ragtag group of characters. There's like a minister, an ex-soldier that was in Afghanistan for years, a mom that lost her family, a police officer lady, um, there's just a few solid characters in this series. You certainly meet more characters, but those are like the main ones. Um, this infection that takes over the city, and you get the perspective from all the characters in the beginning. Like, you see how they all come together. Like, how did the policewoman get to this group? How, where did the teenager come from? You get a little tiny backstory. It's not dragging. It's not, like, info dumping, but it's, like, you get a little story, and then they all come together and they try to survive. Now they have like an um, army tank. It's not a tank, but it's a big military vehicle. That's an armored vehicle that's big. I forget what they called it, but it's a big vehicle. And they travel across the country trying to um, find other survivors because there's really not very many. They eventually come across um, different encampments, like safety encampments, that's not necessarily run by the government, but people that, you know, made, hauled things up to make like a fortress, like a fort. Uh, some of them are supposedly government run. They're ex-military government people that are more power hungry than anything. They appear to be, all, oh, oh, come in, we'll keep you safe and all that stuff. But things kind of go sideways and then they have to try to figure out, should we stay? Should we go? Like, is it just one person? Is it all people? What are they doing to these women? Or what are they doing to these children? What are they doing to these men? And, you know, they think for a second, oh, they finally got to safety. They can stop and rest a bit. But when they get there, it's almost worse than the living dead. Um, so this book, like the first book, um, is them coming together and getting on the road and um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, turmoil and, uh, getting to, because some of these characters in these books are come from completely different worlds, like a suburban mom that had two children that lost her children, lost her husband, that was, you know, a cookie cutter little lady is, you know, compared to, uh, a soldier, hardened soldier, older man, to a minister, to a teenager that's kind of a dweeb, but one of those people that might, uh, like an oddball teenager that view this almost like, oh, it's a zombie apocalypse. I can really go out and shoot a gun and kill people because it's okay to do that now. You know what I mean? Because he was an oddball in school, but now he's, everybody else that bullied him is dead so he can be whoever he wants to be and he tries to reinvent himself and then the minister that's struggling with why is god forsaken this world and uh doing this to the people of that love him so much and um there's a lot of different things like that um this book though as it goes through some of these characters uh break apart not because they don't like each other, but some decide to stay, some decide to move forward. 
Um, so you, you get more of a global, not global, but country. This is like in the States really where it takes place. Uh, you get more of a, you get pockets of, okay, what's going on in this part of the country? What's going on in this part of the country? And eventually they still, they come back together and, but by that time, the world is, or like the, the country, the, the people are just corrupt not the characters in here. There's some good people out there, but there's seems to be much more um, deceitful people. And then the virus, the infection that starts, starts to mutate. So they're not just contending with son of a bitch people. They're contending with infected people. Then they're contending with like kind of monster creature things. Then they're contending with this and this and this. And it just seems to go up and up and up and you can see that you know inside the characters minds how they shift their perspective of who's really the bad guy here you know the world's never going to go back to how it was but who's really the bad guy here are these monsters terrible well they can be but are they are the infected people that is slowly dying out but something else is more emerging they're not that hard to kill. You just need to be careful. And then there's the people that are trying to be good and try to put together little pockets of the country trying without letting corrupt people get in power because they know that doesn't work. You know, which one, which one should we do? Which one should we stay around? Which one, where should we go? Should we be nomads or should we settle down somewhere? Um, this takes place over a year and then kind of teleports at the very end to a few years down the road and um yeah it wraps up but the world certainly is never the same again um whereas this you get the idea that the world might go back together this the world will never be the same again but it's not necessarily a bad world but it's it's certainly it's a matter of your perspective so Anyways, I enjoyed it. I really did. And they're not big books. Like, they're not. Um, I'm just going to do this so I can get a screenshot of it. There. I really enjoy zombie books. I've read quite a few other ones, but I've talked about them in other videos. And I still have more zombie books to read. But I can only read so much before I need to switch up the genre and read something else. But um, I really enjoyed it. This was probably my least favorite. It wasn't bad, but just, it was just, whatever. Um, these two though, I, I, this is more like an action movie. This is more like a action drama movie. Action movie? Drama with, in a zombie apocalypse. So, um, yeah, if you're interested, these are three suggestions. Again, if you want zombie infection light that these a little more intense but not in a terrible grotesque way so anyways that's my little spiel for today i plan on talking about more books but this just this just kind of touched on like zombie-ish apocalypse um kind of stuff i certainly read much more horror books or i've read more horror books last year but they don't fall under the umbrella of apocalypse, I don't think. So, anyways, I'm going to say peace, love, and happiness today and every single day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you so choose. But if not, that's okay, too. I still love you. I still want all the happiness for each and every one of you out there. I certainly do. I really, really honest and truly do. Yes, I do. So, okay, guys. With that, I'm going to say have a good night or have a good morning. And I'll see you sometime soon. Happy reading. Bye. Boink. Wow. <laughs>